Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. It's time for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. You guys seem to be loving this, and I am loving it, too. I just can't stay away. I'm learning a little bit every time I play, so hopefully I eventually will get to be at least an average player on this game. In the meantime, you can check out my first two videos. You can click on the link in the description below. That'll take you back to my original first look at this game. We're going to continue diving into the Naval Academy. We do not have a campaign yet that will be coming. This is Alpha 1 version 60, so we're far from a finished product. And uh, I just want to say once again, thank you so much to all of you who have been offering input as far as uh, knowledge about historical dreadnoughts and battleships, as well as kind of pointing out some helpful strategy for me who I'm, I'm fairly new to the whole naval combat thing. I do it here and there, but not enough to be great at it. So um, we're going to dive in today to uh, the where uh, Super Dreadnought or Battle Cruiser is the one that I decided to do. And as I said before, please keep that feedback coming. I am thick skinned and I need to learn. And so hopefully you all can share with me. And I would recommend to any of you who are thinking about getting this game or have already gotten it to read all the comments. There's a lot of great stuff going on in the discussion. Uh, that will help a lot along the way. So, uh, wow. Um, I feel like I want to go with more funds on this one. Uh, instead of guns and fire control, that extra $42 million is huge. That will give me $97 million and probably allow me to go in with more ships than I otherwise might. Uh, so with all of these battles uh, and scenarios, there are different things available as far as technology goes. So uh, I imagine when you get to the campaign mode, there's going to be a research component to all of that to allow you to uh, un unlock new things. So I can go with a Battlecruiser 4, or I can go with a Dreadnought 3. Uh, I think they're, they're basically the same size. The Battlecruiser has a little bit more surface visibility, but I want to stick to Dreadnoughts, I think, for now. Uh, so I'm going to play around with this a little bit, and I will come back and talk about what I decided to do as far as my build goes. All right, so before I get to talking about the ship that I've built, I want to take a look at something because uh, we actually have an opportunity to get a little bit of a glimpse into what the campaign is going to be all about. Because in the help section, some of the basics about the campaign are there. So let's look at this real quick. Uh, when you choose uh, to play the campaign, you're transferred to a window where you must choose which nation to play. Starting year is not... Uh, containing changes in borders and economy, but determines the technology progress so you can test more advanced ships faster uh, in the world. You see a global map divided into sea regions, and on the right, a summary of important info. Clicking on sea regions shows the contained fleet strength of every nation. There's a minimum tonnage required to control those waters, depending on enemy fleets, connected provinces, financial power, and peace and war status. At the moment, no effect, but later various penalties will be issued revolting, resulting in revolts and financial deficiencies. And so there's a little bit there about moving the ships, and you can pause and read that if you want to, but I'm going to kind of move on. Finances. Uh, finances are going to be affected uh, by things, and you can see there's two ways to interact with this interface. You can go to your shipyard development and your tech budget. So there is definitely a tech component to this. That is huge. I'm excited about that. That's going to really kind of make the play replayability uh, a lot uh, a lot of fun. So uh, state, government type, public opinion, your fleet, naval technology. Again, you can see all of these things. And if you want to pause and read them in more detail, you can. I'm just kind of flying through them for now. Naval technology. This technology progresses in all categories in a pace affected by various random events. You can speed it up with two ways, increase the, the budget or allocating up to three priorities. So that's cool. You can prioritize different areas of the research. Politics, uh, when relations become minus 100, war is triggered. At the moment, can only happen between you and AI nations. So that makes me believe that... Um, Oh, okay. You know, now that I think about it, other AI nations are not going to go to war with each other, it seems. But again, eventually, I was hoping maybe that meant there'd be other players involved in a multiplayer. But no, I think that just means that AI won't go to war with themselves uh, or with each other. So uh, ship design, we've already seen some of that. Your fleet, uh, you can see uh, where you can scrap ships. You can suspend construction on ships. And then war, 
Uh, it gives you a little bit of info here. It says that missions are kind of dynamic and they're generated depending on the placement of your ships on that map. Uh, battle outcomes provide victory points that determine who is winning the war. War may end depending on various effects and the victory points for each side. So definitely very, very different than the campaign mode on, say, Ultimate General Civil War. This seems to be a lot less linear and a lot more dynamic depending on the circumstances and what's happening. And because you have multiple nations, you could be at war with different people. So, man, I am dying for this campaign mode to come out. I cannot wait to dive into that. Uh, Game Labs, let's get it going soon, man. Now, this is only going to get us so far with the uh, Naval Academy. But in the meantime, having a lot of fun with it. So I'm only going to have one battleship, and I just couldn't get the weight to offset. I even went down to a 12-inch gun up front. I'm still a little heavy on front. Uh, just I, I played around with this for about 20 minutes, trying to figure out a way to even out the weight, and I just couldn't do it. Uh, that said, I've got 16-inch guns, three of them on the back. I know, I know, it's better to have them in the front, but... The placement of this tower, this is as far back as I could go with the tower. There was just no way to get a third gun in the front. So uh, it's the way it's got to be. I've got a ton of 8-inch guns on the casemates on the side. Uh, over here on the left, you can see I went with the best armor possible, which is part of what the cost was. Uh, I went with geared steam turbines. I've got electrical turrets, which are not quite the electric hydro, but I couldn't go that well. Automatic reloading is the best kind of reloading you can have, so I did that. Uh, I also went with, um, where is it, TNT explosives, which is the second highest you can get uh, as far as cost goes. Uh, what they do is they give me shell damage and penetration bonuses, but they're 800% of the cost of black powder, uh, powder shells. So uh, it's worth it, though. I mean, I guess if I switch that, you can see it doesn't quite get me down to where I could have two battleships. Boy, I'm darn close, though, aren't I? Uh, that makes me feel like maybe I should do a little something to just bring the cost down a tad more to where I can get two battleships. That didn't do anything but change the weight. Um, so cost. Let, what if we did this? Now nah, we're too heavy then. Darn it. All right, so now, now maybe we do go back to standard shells. And boy, we're super close on weight now. Uh, if we lower our max speed to 22 knots. Now we've got two battleships. So I'm a little slower, a little less armored and standard shells instead of the heavy ones. But now I've got two battleships instead of one. And my weight offset is not quite as much. So here we go. By the way, um, build time was available on there. And that shows you how long it will take to build specific uh, uh, ships. The, the battleship as I build it was going to be a 29-month build time. That's not something we've really looked at and talked about a whole lot so far. But here we go. This is my first time doing this battle. I do have two AI or two destroyers that were given to me as well. I am going to put them on AI. Just kind of let them do their own thing to screen me. I want to knock out these battleships first if I can. Stay at a distance if at all possible. Am I German? It appears I'm German. Rudolph and Habsburg sound like German names. I didn't even look at that ahead of time, but I suppose they could technically be Austrian as well. But um, In fact, they probably are Austrian if it's Habsburg, because that's the Austrian dynasty rather than the German. They were Hohenzollerns. So I'm going to assume we're Austrian. Let's take a look and see if we can see the flags. Oh, yeah, we're Austrian. Okay, cool. Austro-Hungarian Empire for the win. All right, first things first. I'm going to let these guys go AI, do their thing. Oh, I just can't get used to that control, and I can't change it either. So in the meantime, I guess we just kind of look to the northwest because that's the direction we're headed, and that's where the ships are that we're going to fight. And we'll jump back in when we make contact. Contact is made, and no sooner had I seen the contact than my ships were already firing. Let's go ahead and zip up here and get a look at who out, who's out front. Looks like maybe one of his battleships. Now it's a cruiser. Now we don't even identify what it is yet. Boy, he's fast though. Now we gotta slow things down. That might be why he's fast. Now I've got to turn because I've got those big guns in the rear. 
Yeah, that is a battleship out front. So we want to try and stay at a distance as much as we can because we've got these big guns and there's certainly an advantage there. I've already taken a hit and I've got a fire up top. I didn't do anything to mess with the armor. I just left it how it was. So now my 8-inch guns are opening up. They're probably not going to do a lot on his battleships. But man, I got some big guns on this bad boy. I've got a total of 12 16-inch guns. I've also got 12-inch, a bunch of 8-inch, and then some 5-inch and some torpedoes. Are those Germans? No, they're Italian. Alright, no big hits spotted or uh, landed so far. That's his flagship out front. got to be careful my destroyers don't take hits because they're up there awfully close but hopefully they're going to start launching some torpedoes Habsburg's doing alright Rudolph, both of them are at 100% like to take out his flagship first if I could. Let's go ahead and switch it up here a little bit. Maybe go after this battle cruiser. Smaller target. Let's watch the shots coming in for a little bit here. Because I'm a little worried about this battle cruiser's taking out my destroyers. And there's a lot of fire coming down on my destroyers right now. I'm surprised they haven't been hit yet. Long shots coming in. Not anywhere close to landing. These shots might. These ones are looking good. They're looking good. Oh, they're going to be long, I think. Oh, no. Right short. Okay. Okay. Those are his destroyers there. I can get in close on those bad boys once I take out his battleships. Because I've got a ton of smaller guns on the sides. Alright, let's see what's happening here. Man, there's not landing shots so far. We're 11 kilometers out on his battleship. So let's see how the accuracy changes if we go after one of these other guys. Not a whole lot. Maybe let's target this light cruiser for a little bit. Probably gonna have to get in a little closer. I'm just not landing shots from here. Alright, let's do that start turning this way. I'm going to follow these shots in. Nothing. Not even coming close right now. Of course, my ships are pretty slow, too. I had to sacrifice speed for weight and cost. So we'll speed things up a little bit again for now. Oh, he just nailed one of my destroyers. Tural is in trouble. Because they're up there pretty close. Unlike my battleships. Oh, I just landed a hit on his cruiser right here, though. 
the Zura. Let's take a look at that guy for a second. You got some big guns for being a little ship. All right, we're targeting his battleship now. Let's go ahead and slow things down and watch this for a bit. We're getting a little closer. I think we ought to be able to land some hits soon. Got a hit with a small gun, but it didn't do anything. Here we go. Yes! Oh, it didn't do anything, though. He does have some damage, though. So maybe we did. Okay, we're gonna, his other battleship's out here. So let's go ahead and start turning again so we can make sure that all of our guns are able to fire. Oh, he just nailed, nailed my main gun up front. Damage to the main tower now. Gotta be careful here. It looks like all of my guns are able to fire. Come on guys, we gotta take one of these things out. He's still at 99%. These little guns aren't going to do anything on him. One of my destroyers was sunk. Man, just not doing much. Oh, we crashed again. All right, well, unfortunately we crashed. So I've come back and I've built a slightly different ship, but uh, mostly the same. The weight's a little better this time. I'm gonna have two of them again. Uh, for the most part, I haven't made a whole lot of changes. I did lower the graphics setting one more time down to basic, which is the next level down. There are, I think, maybe six or seven graphic settings, so I'm still kind of somewhere in the middle. So we're going to give this a second go, and we're going to see what happens. It looks like with this graphic setting, we don't have nearly as much smoke uh, being shown, so maybe that has a little bit to play in all of this. I don't know what country we're playing as this time. Let's take a look at the flag. I can't quite tell. No, I guess we'll figure it out as we go. Somebody can probably tell me. Maybe that, is that China? I might be China. I think I might be China this time. All right, let's try this again. This time, though, we're going to keep the destroyers close, and we're not going to let them kind of venture out and get into trouble like they did the last time. So they're going to stay, uh, I guess. we can. Yeah, we can put them on as screens. And I guess we can tell them to go abreast. I don't know. Yeah, let's stay with the head. All right, enemy spotted to the north, so we're going to head that way. We're going to speed things along, and we'll come back when things get interesting. Okay, here we go. We've spotted, and I think we're just going to go ahead and continue going this direction here. How far out is he? He's about 11 kilometers, so pretty low accuracy at that point. You can see where the gun accuracy is, about 5% for my... Uh, six inch gun double six inch guns and a little less than that for the triples so we're gonna have to get a little closer and we'll keep those destroyers out there as screens and I'll keep things on five times at least for now
All right, now my destroyers are heading out that way. Let's see if we can hit this guy. If we can nail this destroyer right off the bat, that'd be glorious. hit him. I don't know how much damage, but every shot landed on a destroyer by our battleship is going to be good. Eh, didn't do much. I just hit his funnel. Let's get a better look at this guy. He's sailing away now. Sailing. He's not really sailing. Steaming away. Right, so we've got a bunch of ships bunched up right here. So I'm just going to start targeting the battleship because he's right in the middle. So even if we miss him, we might nail somebody else. Actually, let's target this guy. Because if something lands short, he might. we might still hit those cruisers. Turn it this way so we can see the sh shots coming in. All right, we'll speed things up a little bit. Oh, his two battleships are about to collide. I don't know what he's doing. Come on, let's get the big guns firing right now. There's two battleships in one spot. And now everybody on the Narva is deaf after those guns just fired over top of him. We did land a few hits. Get some hits on these guys. All right, he's on fire now. He's down to 92 percent. I'll switch my fire over to the Narva just because he's a wider target at the moment. Oh, my destroyers are awfully close. Yep, I was afraid of that. They just gave him an easy target. Had him set to screen, I didn't have him on AI, but they still got off of close. I'm gonna have to get in a little closer and get a little more accurate on my fire. Okay, that's who we're targeting right now. We're at a 12% odds of hitting. Got his tower on fire. And there goes my other destroyer. Where's his other battleship? It's right here. I've got to t swing wide so I can make sure that I'm getting all five of my sets of big guns firing. Oh, did we just crash again? Okay. Looks like there may be some problems with that particular mission because uh, it keeps crashing. So, uh, unfortunately, we're going to wrap it up right there. Uh, I'll just kind of advertise this one as a discussion of the campaign. And we'll hopefully come back with something that's a little more stable. We'll try one of the other missions later on. So, 
Uh, sorry about that, guys, but that's a reality with an alpha mode, and that's why they do this, so we can they can work out all the kinks and everything. And so we'll go ahead and continue to do that, and we'll come back with hopefully a completed battle in the near future. Thanks for watching.